Salut tout le monde, Christine L here, and this is Floss Tube 28. So, number 28. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, this is basically the first time in three or four days that I feel even remotely human. Uh, unfortunately, I've had, well, basically, I have vertigo, and something triggered it this week, and so I've been kind of I was gonna say I've been on my back for three days, but that sounds inappropriate. Um, I have been doing a lot of sleeping and gently sitting up for um, the last three days. Um, the good thing is that I know exactly what triggered it. It took me, I shouldn't say it took me a little bit to figure it out, but um, I mowed the lawn on Thursday, which is all well and good, and apparently my new obsession because I talk about it in every video. Um, but this time I also trimmed the stuff that was around the house. So there are, um, well, basically it's like the little flowers, whatever, dandelions, the stuff that are closest to the house that I can't get with the mower because the wheels are in the way because mechanics. Um, and I don't have a whipper snipper. Um, I don't like those because I know that they'll hit the siding of the house and cause cracks and stuff like that, which I don't want to do. There's enough already that I need to fix. Um, so essentially, I just used a, just a pair of clippers, you know, just the kind that you just sort of do this to clip branches off and stuff like that. So I used that to do the flowers and um, there was some really tall grass in front of my flower beds. So unfortunately, getting up and squatting down, getting up, squatting down, getting up, squatting and down while I moved around the whole house, um, I basically, the, I had to nap that day and then I felt like crap pretty much since then. Today's the first day that I feel even remotely human. I don't know what's going on with my hair. I haven't put any makeup on. I don't care. <laughs> so the fact that I'm sitting upright and don't feel like I'm about to go into just a whole world of dizziness is phenomenal for me today. So I actually did the groceries this morning, which I desperately needed. I also, you know, I've got the dishwasher running, the washer and dryer is going as well. So I, I was able to, you know, at least catch up on a few things today, which is great. But it's yeah the it kind of sucks that as soon as you're feeling better you got to go to work and do adult stuff but that's life you gotta hire a maid or something on it but um yeah so hopefully your week has gone better the rest of the couple weeks was totally fine it was really just those last few days um it is what it is but i'm feeling better today I, i'm filming later than normal which means this will be a little out a little later than normal but it is what it is so speaking of the lawn, I'm gonna, in, it's, I'm not just gonna show you pictures of my lawn, please. But I do wanna insert a couple of like um, photos. I had added some plants to my, my garden. It's just a little section and they're all perennial. So I waited to see a little bit what would pop up and there's a few that popped up on their own, but there's two that I planted myself. So I thought I would share a couple photos of those as they bloom. Um, the first picture I showed you is the purple flowers. They are, I guess, called um, a Veronica. It's a moody blues variation, a dark blue. Um, those are really nice because they were kind of almost blooming when I pot when I planted them, but now they've really like they've really popped. They weren't all closed up and thin. They're really popping out. And then my favorite, of course, is the Asiatic lily. So the pink lily that you saw is a Rosalind dwarf. I don't know anything about all this stuff. I just read it off the cards, I guess. Okay, so don't worry about that. <laughs> um, I'm not a plant pro. I basically, I said I want something that's perennial, um, I, which means that I don't have to replant it every year. The roots are going to stay. And then every spring or late summer, depending on their blooming period, they'll come up on their own. So those are, and, and hardy. So I basically, if it was labeled as a hardy plant or hardy hardy flower, I was like, perfect. I don't have to worry about consistently watering it or where's the sun, where's the shade, etc. Because I am not about to spend my time every day watering. I don't really believe in that kind of thing. I'm sort of a let nature do its thing. When it rains, they'll get water. Um, you know, and when there's sun out, it's a sunny day, they'll get their sun. We had like two days last week that were ridiculously hot. It got up to something like 36 degrees with the humidity. And for the first time I ran the air conditioning, it got way too cold for me. 
I have yet to find that mid-level where I'm enjoying the temperature, but it was only two days. And then it just plummeted right back again. We went back down to like 15 degrees or something like that. And I'm just like, how? How does that work? It makes no sense. But it's only June and we keep telling me that some of the best weather in New Brunswick is really like August, September. It's later in the summer, so it's fine. Right now, though, I haven't been hanging outside as much because black flies, that's what apparently is eating me alive when I'm mowing the lawn. And um, in the evenings, it, June bugs. Those things are massive. They're like little beetle-y type things. I don't know what the deal is. They're gross. They get stuck on you. I, I took the garbage out one time and I was freaking out because it hit my leg. And then I, for whatever reason, I swiped my leg again and realized that it had not just hit my leg, it had hit my leg and stuck. And so when I swiped, I was brushing it off and I don't like bugs. Not even a little bit. So that's been unpleasant. <laughs> but there you have it. Uh, um, today's mug, love is love. This is a Ray Dunn that I um, picked up. Okay, it's not a dun uh, it's not a mug. It's a tumbler, but whatever. You get what I mean. Oh my god. Um, picked this up. I think at like Marshalls or something like that. But too cute and way too appropriate for the month. So. Speaking of June, it is Pride Month. I am not going to go on a long rant. I'm just going to casually mention something that I'm a little confused about. Um, it's not a new expression. I've seen it mentioned before. But often, because LGBTQIA2 plus is so long and there are so many letters in it, it's often referred to as the Alphabet Mafia. A lot of people use it. There are now brands named Alphabet Mafia, or a brand at least, named Alphabet Mafia. Um, people are naming their colorways, whether it be floss or yarn or whatever, the Alphabet Mafia collection, whatever, whatever. I have a problem with that. So originally I was like, why are we even using this? Where did this come from? And I get it because it's a lot of letters, etc., etc. Um, the only thing I could find really is that it was originally coined by anti-LGBTQ2 plus people to use against them as if to say like, screw you guys, you're a cabal of some sort, you're terrible people. And then the community sort of co-opted and said, well, actually, that sounds really cool. We're going to go ahead and use it ourselves. So I sort of understand the reclamation part of it in terms of using something that's been used against you for so, so long. Um, and reclaiming it and making it yours. Um, it's often the way I felt about using the word fat to describe myself as the word that's been used against me my whole life. Now, to me, it's just, screw you, it's a descriptive word. It's neither positive nor negative. It's just a fact about the size of my body. The problem I have is mafia. Mafias aren't a good thing, y'all. I mean, I don't know if you're aware of this. I don't know if you've seen a couple movies or whatever, but it's not just in the movies. The mafia is for real. So the issue I take with that is that, you know, as someone who is Sicilian and who heard jokes all her life about, well, don't piss her off. She might have connections. Wink, wink. Um, as well as the fact that I am from Montreal, which is a city that was heavily controlled and influenced by the Mafia for a very long time in recent history. Um, the Mafia is an organized crime syndicate. They're fraudulent, they're terrible, they're murderous, they are not a good thing. So when I hear people referring to the LGBTQ2 plus community as the Alphabet Mafia, I'm like, um, we're kind of trying to get away from negativity. We're trying to get away from that. We are not a cabal. We are not some syndicate of organized crime. So I just want to say that if you too dislike that phrase, this is a safe space for you. Um, I will not invest or purchase in anything or spend money on anything that is labeled as Alphabet Mafia. It is not an expression I will use and am comfortable using. And I would kind of prefer people didn't use it in front of me. Does that mean I'm going to shun or point out or poo-poo everyone who uses it? No. That's just my personal stance on it. I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. And I really wish everyone else would become uncomfortable with it. 
but that's not for me to control or for me to say. So it just kind of grinds my gears when people use Alphabet Mafia and then laugh about it. I'm like, the Mafia is hideous and it's real and it's dangerous and traumatic to a lot of people. So just gonna say that, that I am not a fan. If you want to insist on using it, that's, that's on, that's, go for it. I'm not gonna stop you. I'm not gonna poo poo you. I'm not gonna point it out every time. Um, I'm certainly not gonna stop following anyone for using it. It's just, like I said, not something that I am going to celebrate. Uh, I'm not gonna celebrate it. I'm not gonna echo it. And I'm not gonna put my money in to something named as such. So that's it. Um, Otherwise, Pride is going really well. June has been fantastic. Um, last week, uh, I, t I took. My mom and my aunt and I went to a drag show. Um, it was the first drag show in the city of Shediac. To all, you know, either local or at least Canadian drag queens. It was a lot of fun. Amazing talent. Super funny. So it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, I'm hoping that there's more locally, but I believe Moncton celebrates. I don't understand this concept of not everybody doing Pride in June. So there are some cities that are doing events in June, some are doing events in July, and some cities are doing events in August. I don't get it. Whatever. But Moncton apparently is going to do their events in um, July, I believe. So I'm hoping at that time maybe to be able to participate or to you know, do more things, either go to talks or discussions or anything like that, just to see what else is going on. Um, I haven't seen a lot advertised, but I'm hoping to at least participate in a few more things. Um, I've been wearing my little rainbow mask from the rainbow box from Black Needle Society. I've got a rainbow purse, but that that's all the time. I've had that rainbow purse five ever. Um, but yeah, so it's been a lot of fun and it's really nice to, to acknowledge that as a thing. Um, but I'm, I'm rainbows 24-7, y'all. <laughs> so, what have I been watching? I finally finished The X-Files, so I finally got to season 10 and 11, which were the newer seasons that were done in 2016 and... Yeah, 2016 and 2017. Those two scenes I actually had not watched. So I did basically the seasons, the movies in the appropriate place. So I think you do like seasons one to five, first X-Files movie, and then season six to nine, second X-Files movie, and then ten seasons 10 and 11. Seasons 10 and 11 were hilarious. Um, I mentioned before that I'm a big fan of the, the episodes that were meant to be funny. I think for all of season 10 and all of season 11, X-Files did not take itself seriously and it just, for me, became the best episodes. I mean, at one point in time, Mulder's phone rings and it's the X-Files theme. I was like, um, that's so meta, thank you. I appreciated that so much. And they do, you know, they poke fun at themselves, uh, you know, at both their history together as well as, I mean, there's one episode where there's a were human. It's a lizard that got bit by a human, and so now he turns human when the moon is full. And I'm just like, oh, I love it, love it, love it. So I thought it was hilarious. Um, that those were good seasons. The other thing I've been watching is I've been trying to catch up on dra uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. So I watched All Stars season six, five, All Stars five, meh, and then um, season twelve. Meh. I don't know if it's because it's been on, like there's been 18 seasons really with the two of them combined, but it's basically, I think we've gotten to the point where it's like the same story, but different characters. So, I mean, they're, it's season 12. Why are we still seeing queens that can't dance, queens that can't sing, queens that can't act, queens that can't be funny, um, queens that bomb the Snatch Game? Like, you know there's going to be a Snatch Game in every single season. Why are you not prepared? So I've been kind of having this sort of like, every time I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, you are you have no confidence. You're crying again. You're crying again. Like, season 12 has the least confident queens I've ever seen in my life. And they're just sobbing all the time, all the time crying. And I'm just like, I'm here for the fun and the funny. 
And I get that there's heartwarming moments and, you know, people share parts of their history and their connection with their family, what it's been like to be a queen. I get that. That's all good. But the, this constant doubting yourself, I mean, that would probably be me. But then I would never try out because I already know I don't have those skills. And we just talked about me having a vertigo. Can you see someone with vertigo doing a dead drop or a lift or a spin of any kind? It's not going to happen because then that's it. You're done for the day. You're done for the week. But, I mean, you've tried out. You've been a drag queen for years. You've been doing this. You're on this show. You've got 18 seasons. You've got how many episodes of stuff. You should know what to expect by now. Learn to sew. And I'm just kind of at this point where I'm like, there's no excuse, ladies. There's no excuse. You have all of this history to look back on and go, okay, I need to prepare for this. I need to prepare for this. I need to... Not that you have to know how to do all of that, but spend some time seeing if you can learn choreography. Spend some time doing basic vocal exercises or something because you know all of that is going to come up in the show. So I've kind of had it with this whole, like, this season 12, it just seemed to be like, half the queens don't believe in themselves and then are just getting mad when they lose. And I'm like, you got critique. Take it in, learn what it's about, what you need to improve on, and then move forward, right? But otherwise, I still love the show for what it is, which is the joy part of it and the costumes and the funny and the shade. That's all still wonderful to watch. So from that perspective, it's great. And yes, I'm far behind. I've never watched Canada's Drag Race. I don't even know who the winners are or who the queens are. Um, I'm just kind of stuck with whatever is previously was on Prime or I just had Prime and I recently just got Netflix, which is why I'm catching up on that stuff. So I'm kind of tied to whatever. I don't have cable. I don't have network TV, nothing like that. I don't even think I could get CBC if I wanted. Nothing. So it is what it is. I'm kind of a little behind, but I don't mind because then I get to watch that and, and I always watch, like I'm watching season 12 and thank God Netflix got untucked because now I get to watch, I watch the episode, then I watch the untucked episode, then I watch the regular, you know, the episode that aired, then I watch the untucked. So I, I like to watch the two together because then I get really a sense of what they're saying to each other and who these queens are. But Anyways, still a lot of fun. I'm just kind of at the point where I'm like, maybe there's been too many seasons. Maybe it's time for this to end or to change the format up completely or something. Because I'm just kind of like, oh, we're going to have another episode where we're crying because we don't believe in ourselves. Or, oh, another crying episode because, you know, like dancing isn't my thing and it's just not fair for me to be judged on this. It's like, but this is the competition. You should expect that. And last but not least, I've been, uh, I caught up on the newest episodes of Lucifer. I, unpopular opinion time, I do not find Lucifer attractive. People talk all the time about what a charming and he's so sexy and, and I'm just like, eh. He does not do it for me and it, it's got nothing to do with the way he looks, whatever. I am just not convinced by his charm or sexiness that he supposedly gives off in the show. I'm like, you're not, you're not doing it for me. I'm not. So now the episodes were good. I love the storyline. It's all fun, but I have to say this. Um, you might as well write Chloe off the show. I feel like for this last part, what was the season five? She took an absolute backseat. They, I mean, was she barely even in the episodes? I can't remember. She was literally just a prop for Lucifer. Um, and I think just the writing made that really obvious. I don't, she's not a terrible actress. I would just never, I, I don't know. I never vibed with her in the show. And I feel like the writers feel that way too, because they pretty much wrote her off on this season. She was literally, she is there for Lucifer's man pain. Like once they made peace with like, oh, I think we do love each other. Yay. Then it was like, great. We don't need her. He can have, oh, family issues now. We've resolved the love part. Let's give him some family issues. And she was like totally in the background. And every time it was her either talking about how they feel for each other or talking about him and his family issues primarily. And I'm just like, that's all she is now. She is just a prop. So I kind of felt bad about that. I mean, I don't much care for her character, but if I was considered a lead in the show and suddenly I became a prop, I'd be like, what the frack? So, poor Chloe. So, 
enough chit chat. Let's get into the meaty business. Um, first and foremost, let's talk diamond painting. So I've been showing my progress of um, Evening Light from Diamond Art Club. I finished it. I will link that in the I card above if you want to watch my finished video and my final review. But here's what it looks like framed and completed. And I did start, I had previously mentioned that I was going to start something new uh, for Pride for the month of June. And unfortunately, I worked very little on it and I'm, I'm going to retire it. I'm not going to finish it. So this is the piece I've been working on. It's essentially Pride, like Scrabble tiles, basically. Um, it's a small one, not, you know, too hefty. And you can see I worked on some of it here. I'm... I'm not enjoying it. It's really, really pixelated. Like there's nothing anywhere that's a solid color. Um, the colors are a little less muted, let's say, than they are because like there's nothing really colorful about this. Um, and it's looking better on camera than it is in person. Um, in person, you just can't, the 3D effect just isn't there. You can't really tell the shading on the blocks. It just looks like blobs of color on the canvas. So even while I was working on this, I'm going, do I finish this? Do I not finish this? Do I bother? And so I knew right away that I wasn't enjoying and that it would be a chore. And so I didn't, I mean, you can tell I haven't done much on it. I was not in the mood to pick it up at all. And then I, there's a part in here that's two colors, like the symbol two and the symbol three. I was like, put the wrong colors on the wrong labels. Did I screw something up? And I double checked, I triple checked, I quadruple checked. I went, okay, symbol two is this color. And because I had leftover, like I had more drills that can fit in my container, I had the original packaging with the labeling on it and the DMC on it. And I went, no, that's right. But how come two is light, but it has the dark drill and three is dark, but it has the light drill. I was convinced that those colors were swapped. And it wasn't until I was putting the drills away, despite my triple checking, that I realized that yes, those packages were mislabeled. So I was putting the dark where the light, I mean, I swapped it myself in this section here. See, you can see right that where that line is. I swapped it myself. So up here, the dark and the light grays, like this, these colors in here are swapped. So the light is where the dark should be and the dark is where the light should be. Whereas in this section down here, I swapped it myself and said, let me see. If that's the problem, is that really why I'm not liking this? Um, it still looks pixely and yucky and I still can't tell the 3D effect. So I'm surprised actually about how good it's looking on camera in comparison. <laughs> um, so then when I was putting my drills away, I had a bag of, let's say one of the colors was 647. 647 was the lighter and the darker color was a different. Sure enough, the 3023 was labeled as 647 and 647 was labeled as 3023. So right from the get-go, I was going to fail on this because the uh, drills were mislabeled. Rather than fuss and try to switch and, I mean, were you, was I really going to go back into all of this and change? Take all the twos out and take all the threes out? And I, yeah, no, I wasn't even enjoying working on it, let alone going back and trying to fix it. So... I have retired this, I'm starting on something else, and hopefully we'll see some progress on that diamond painting next, um, next boss tube. Moving on to cross stitch, I've got some finishes this week. So, I'm, the first one I'm going to show you was a freebie pattern from, I believe it's the Witchy Stitcher. Safe space. So actually, I'm really happy. I happen to have some rainbow ribbon. I had a black hoop. So we've got this cute little safe space with the rainbow flag. Um, and then, of course, keeping it spooky, we've got the gothic um, font or typeface. And we've got cute little multicolored bats all around it. I love this and I finished it so fast and I was really happy with it. Very, very fun. This is my dining room right now, but I think I'm going to have to maybe fix it or move it somewhere because the, I basically just popped it on a nail that was already there, but it's so high up on the wall. It just doesn't make sense, but not that you guys need to know all that. Um, but yeah, this was a lot of fun to stitch and 
I don't think I, except for the bats themselves, I did not use any of the called for colors. Um, so these right here, so the rainbow part itself, those are all sulky. So I got, I think it's the summer pack, we'll see it in the haul section of the video, and use the sulky for that part of it. My first time using it, quite easy, holy crap. I can see why people love to use sulky because it was awesome. Um, super easy to work. I don't think I had any tangles. It glided through the fabric. It was awesome. The fabric, by the way, 25 count Lugana from uh, Hand Dye by Rolanda. Um, so the black and the brown here, yes, are DMC. And then the blue and the pink, those are actually um, almond M&M silks. Uh, so I figured, why not? Let's throw in a couple silks with those silky. Let's use a little bit of everything. And then the safe space, which probably, uh, yeah, it's not going to show up on camera at all. So the lettering for the space, safe space is actually a Krynik. Yeah. So this is my first time working with a Krynik. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It's definitely a lot better than the DMC Metallics. I've used those before and they're, they're really stiff and awful. So this was actually not too bad to work with. I did feel like there wasn't much on the roll though. That's the only thing, like for what you pay for, considering you're just not getting, or it doesn't feel like you're getting a lot. But in person, it does have a bit of the a shimmer and shine. It's just because of the direct lighting, it is not going to show up on camera. Um, and then, of course, the bats are the called for DMCs. So this was a lot of fun. This was a quick stitch. It's a free pattern. I highly encourage, and they will, of course, everything will be linked in the Google document. Um, you'll find this under finishes for 2021. And like I said, cute little rainbow, little hoop, and we're all done. So the, the stats for safe space. So yes, it is by the witchy stitcher. Um, I started on the 3rd of June, finished on the 4th of June. So like I said, quick stitch, it only took eight hours and was just over 800 stitches. So that, I mean, it's not a small, small, it's not, you know, but that to me is when I, you're used to doing 5,000 stitches, 6,000, 8,000, whatever the hell Dark Queen's going to be, um, less than a thousand stitches is pretty reasonable. For my second finish this week, because this was primary, um, this Fortnite, I always hate saying that because then I think like I'm calling out Fortnite fabrics, but I'm not. Um... Mom, you're going to have to look away because I finished your birthday present. Um, and obviously you don't want to get spoiled. Still got a week to go. Um, I finished the light by Barbara Anna. Mom, you're looking away. Yes. Good. Oh, oh reflections. Here we go. Isn't this gorgeous? How fun is this? So... I found an inexpensive frame. Um, I picked this up at Michael's in the liquidation. So it kind of looks, you know, it was less expensive, which is fantastic. And it looks, to be honest, a little beat up. But personally, I just kind of think it has a distressed look. Like there's nothing horrible about it that looks so damaged and unusable. It just looks a bit distressed. That's all. Um, and there's a double matting. Yay! Because <laughs> I think like almost everything I frame doesn't have a mat. Um... But let's see. Yeah, it's like I said, I have to kind of do it as at an angle. But we are all done skis. Uh, she's absolutely beautiful. This was fun to work on. This was a 32 count mystery linen, but the color works so beautifully with um, both the theme of it and being a little bit, you know, supposed to be a light in the darkness. Um, and it matches really, really well with the colors of the flowers or the, the leaves, I should say, the foliage. So we've got another finish. Yay. Let me just put that away. Mom, you can look again. We're all good. So the stats on that. Um, so again, it's a Barbara Anna design. It's done on a 32 count mystery linen. Um, I started it on the 15th of May and finished it on the 9th of June. Um, all told, that was about 38 hours and over 5,200 stitches. So uh, that's about my average. So that's kind of like my wheelhouse, what I enjoy. It's a long enough stitch that I enjoy the project, but short enough that I've got to finish in a reasonable amount of time. Speaking of, having finished Safe Space and The Light recently, um, I've decided that I need to have more finishes before I get more new starts. 
I have a few projects that have been kind of languishing and one of them we'll talk about in a minute, but um, I definitely feel like I want to, I think it's also because the Dark Queen took me so long and I spent so much time on it the last one with the over, you know, it's like 5,500 stitches or whatever it was, 5,200 stitches. Um, and the finishes always make me feel good and it's always nice to see that finished project at the end. So I kind of don't want to start anymore until I've got at least two more finishes. So I already know what I think those two finishes could be before I have a new start. Um, but aside from safe, safe space, that means I have no new starts this week. And hopefully, if I stick to my guns, um, I won't have any new starts in the next couple weeks as well. So I kind of don't like the idea of having too many. I know I don't even have like a dozen whips, you guys. And I know that everybody's like, oh my God, I've got like 30, 40, whatever. It's, I have a reasonable amount, but I do like the finish and I do want to have a few more done before I start throwing more into project bags and, and putting a few stitches in. I almost forgot, I also do have a finish for now, technically speaking. So I finished another section of the Zodiac from Tiny Modernist. Yay! So this week around, or this time around, we added, am I unfocused? Yep. Yeah. We added a Cancer, so this cute little clackety clack crab. Is any of the cutest? So the only thing I will say is that the, the emblem on the body doesn't show up as well. Again, the camera really emphasizes it, which is fantastic for you guys to see. Um, but it kind of blends in a bit in person, but I think that's kind of the nature of doing a one over one backstitch on a project that's already one over one. So, or a one thread backstitch on one over one. This is a 25 count Lugana. I have to be honest and say that I can't wait till this is done, not because of the project itself, but so that I can no longer be doing one over one. I am not enjoying it. I find it difficult. Um... The tangling in the threads, like the back of this, and I don't care about the backs in general, but the back of this is just like, it's a mess, it's disgusting, there's knots, there's just like a little bit of everything. And eventually it kind of just gets to a point where I'm like, you know what, forget it, the knot's gonna stay, the bubble's gonna stay, I don't care, I'm just gonna keep going. It's so difficult for me to get knots out of a single thread as opposed to when there are two threads. Don't know why that is, it just is. So yeah, as much as I am loving the final result, there are very few, if any, other projects that I will start that are one over one. Um, but now this does put us at halfway through, and I have to tell you that I'm still really, really glad that I did all the framework um, beforehand. And I think it would be a lot each month to try to do the frames around it and all of this stuff, as well as trying to do, you know, this portion. But um, I think it's so cute. Tiny Modest is doing a wonderful job. And I did indeed sign up for their next stitch along, which is a Halloween one. Sorry, not sorry. That starts July 1st. That means between now and then, I have to do two finishes in order to be allowed to start something new. Wish me luck. Speaking of Stitch Along, the next one I've been working on is Dark Queen of the Sea from Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is on Under the Sea Fabric. I have not taken it out of the Q-Snap because this is what I'm currently working on. And you can't even tell what I did. <laughs> I've only put in a few. Look, I'm in sync for three days. Um, I just put in a bit more of, of the dark blue here. And so what we're doing is kind of working our way up. Um, let me show you a picture of what it's going to look like when I'm done. So you can see that we're we're adding more of those tentacles and bringing it up here. So that is going to be my focus for the next little bit, trying to get some of that stuff done. So yeah, I mean, this is moving along. Um, I'm kind of at a point where I can't wait till she's done. It's a lot of stitching. We know me by now, a 5,000 stitch project is perfect, anything more than that. And I'm like, I am I not done yet? But um, no, I do just, 
I want to get out of this color scheme and into something new. And when are we going to use the treasure braid? I have all this beautiful shiny thread and I'm not using any of it. So I want to know where the treasure braid comes in. But this is part 10. There's, there's only two more after this. So we'll see. And the last project that I have been able to touch in the last two weeks is only because of something called 25-7. So 25-7. The idea or concept here is that either 25 minutes or 25 stitches a day for seven days you work on a project that you haven't touched in a while. For me, this is my oldest whip. So let me show you. This is Through the Stars from Cloud's Factory. I am doing it on an easy stitch for fun. It's a galaxy fabric. It is still in a Q-snap because like I said, I'm doing 25 minutes. Personally, I've chose 25 minutes, not 25 stitches. I can get 40 to 50 stitches done in 25 minutes. And so that'll get me more each day. Um, it's not much, but I was so impressed with other people's progress on doing a simple or mere 25 minutes. So this is a seven days worth of progress. So basically what I did was um, I was left with, I think, like this half of the circle. I completed this entire circle and this as well. So that's just 25 minutes a day for seven days. It had averaged out, like I said, to about 50 stitches per day. So I did that for seven consecutive days. I'm going to take seven consecutive days off and then I'm going to do again. So I'm just going to do this like every two weeks type of thing. So every two weeks, I will pick this up for 25 minutes a day for seven days. Um, and that's just for this gold part because this DMC silk is killing me. It doesn't matter how short your length of thread is, it frays immediately. It's constantly knotting. It's constantly twisting. Um, I should have done just one thread, not two, because it's just so hefty and they don't lay straight. It's, I'm not enjoying working on this. And when that 25 minute timer goes off, I'm always like, oh, thank God, which is not how I feel about any of my projects or have ever felt about any of my cross stitch projects. So I'm doing this, like I said, only for the silk itself. The rest I really enjoyed. Like I love doing the characters. That's a lot of fun. It's just DMC thread. There's lots of color changes. Something cute comes out of it. So I don't mind that once I'm done all this gold stuff, I will probably be finished with the, the critters and all the stuff in between. Um, I'll probably be done that in no time and I will be enjoying stitching. For me though, like I said, this is my oldest, currently my oldest whip. It is going to be a year old in August. For me, and I had not touched this since March. That's kind of unheard of for me. There's only one project, I think one other project that I started and then Okay, so maybe two projects that I started and then never touched again. Um, mostly I start the project and I finish it. So the 25-7, like I said, I was really stunned at seeing the progress that people have been making by doing only 25 minutes a day. Um, at first I was like, that's not much. But then now explaining it to you, I want to finish this and I did this and I did this. I'm like, oh, that actually came out to quite a bit. So it's kind of been the only way that I can motivate myself to work on this and get this the silky stuff done. Once that's done, it'll be easy peasy. I'll be so happy to finish it that it's not even going to be an issue. Um, so 25 seven on through the stars. Um, it'll get done eventually. Eventually. I feel like I'm all over the place today and I can't believe I'm already at the haul portion of stuff, but I've got quite a few things I want to talk about today. So, um, let me take a deep breath and slow it down a little. But, um, like I said, I think it's because being sick, I wasn't entirely prepared for what I was doing today. It's fine. It's fine. Um, let's talk purchases. So the biggest purchase and definitely the most expensive is I finally got myself a lap stand. So this one is from Case Creations. I purchased it from Bee Creek Limited. I'm kind of having mixed feelings. 
I'm actually, I enjoy working with this, although I had to get used to the amount of bulk that's on this side. Um, so for me, I work it like this and it's my left hand. Sometimes I find I kind of have to go over all the knobs and stuff. But the Q-snap fits perfectly in here. I have no issues. It was super easy to build because you do have to put it together yourself. But their instructions were clear enough and everything is tight and strong enough that I'm not worried. Um, what I do appreciate about it is that I'm not scrunching my hand up holding my Q-snap anymore. So I finally get to relax my left hand and my left arm. I'm not constantly holding that Q-snap. So um, less pain in my hand, which has been fantastic. Um, the only thing is, of course, trying to get used to this and the angle and stuff like that. It took me a little while at first because I'm also like tend to hold my Q-snap not okay maybe not this close but I hold my cue snap very close to my face so it was a little difficult to kind of get that going but once I figured it out and got used to it I was happy um originally I had gotten this because I wanted to do both of course use the pain in my hand but I also wanted to do two-handed stitching um I wanted to be able to go from underneath with one hand and from the top with my other hand the problem is that I don't have very much dexterity in the left hand and I do what we call railroading. So with railroading, what happens is when I put the needle or the, the thread back through the work, I split the two threads when I'm working two over, well, two over whatever. If I'm working with two threads, when I'm putting my needle back and puncturing through and going towards the back of the piece, I go in between the two different threads. What that's supposed to do is help it lay flat and next to each other on your project. Um, so with my left hand that lacks the dexterity, I have trouble getting in there. And so it takes me a lot longer than just pulling my right hand over each time. Um, so I've continued it to do one handed stitching, but I'm able to use my left hand much more in the back. And what I do now is I will actually sort of use it to hold the thread flat that way when I'm pulling it's tangling a lot less because my hand is there preventing it from doing that like I'll hold the the thread f flat against the project as I'm pulling um and that prevents sort of it from from tangling too much from knotting up so I think it sped me up in that respect that I'm stopping and undoing knots less than before however you still have the old, like, you're still flipping the work back and forth, right? So I've got to screw and unscrew this every time. So probably it just evens out. I don't know that it's saving me any time, but comfort-wise, it's been phenomenal. The other thing that has me go, ooh, about it is that it was really fucking expensive. Um, I bought it on special, only to realize that after I bought mine, they put a new listing up and put it $10 cheaper. I was just like, what? Okay, fine. The shipping itself was ridiculously expensive. Um, I don't know if it's the weight of it, but the problem is that they use UPS. UPS is notorious for two things. One, overcharging on shipping costs. I absolutely believe that it could have been shipped for cheaper just using uh, USPS, the US Postal Service. Second, I'm in Canada. UPS absolutely charges customs and duties each and every single time. They will do not think you're going to get away with it. If the listing had said that they shipped UPS, I would not have bought the item. Now, with the shipping and with the duties that I paid, I paid more to have it delivered than this cost itself, even at full price. So every time I pick this up, all I see is the expense, the expense, the expense. Now, I should look at it as an investment. It's helping me, you know, feel less pain, da, da, da. I'm stitching more comfortably. Oh, I think I have a delivery. Yep, that was Amazon. I'll explain that in a second. Um, so yeah, when something ends up costing more to get than the item, than the value of the item itself, I get really upset. Um, there's a really popular needle minder maker and I have wanted to get some of their stuff and everybody talks about them and they make the cutest things. Um, it costs like $20 to ship a needle minder that fits in my hand and is like less than an ounce. Not okay with that. I don't think that's realistic, but I don't know if that's an Etsy thing. I've heard more than once that if you depend on Etsy shipping format, that they just overcharge for everything. So... Either way, I'm using it all the time. 
Um, it fits the Q-snap beautifully. It's all good, but I had this sour part in my brain every single time that I had to pay, I think it was like $60 to ship it. And I was just like, wow, that's a lot. But then I was like, maybe I'm prepaying duties, which would make sense. Um, both for the value of the item and the cost of shipping. I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then I get dinged at the door for another, um, what was it, 40 bucks, something like that, 50 bucks almost. I was just like, what the fudge? Even the UPS guy was just like, I'm so sorry. He's like, I really hate having to do this. I really hate having to ask people for like money. When they... I was like, that's not your fault. I said, that's not, that's not on you. Don't worry about it. You know, here's my credit card, da, da, da. But I literally paid more to have it shipped to me in Canadian dollars than that is worth in Canadian dollars. And like I said, if I knew it was going to be shipped UPS, I would have said, nope because I would have known right away that I was going to get customs and duties at the door. Um, and that's the first time in like two, three years that I've been purchasing stuff that I get customs and duties because it's UPS and they charge it every time. So just an FYI. Also, I wanted an artisan designs, the Elon lap desk or lap stand, but they don't ship to Canada. They ship to us only. That's probably because they know how expensive, expensive it is to ship outside or to ship internationally and so they don't want to hear people like me bitching about how much they paid for shipping and duties but I couldn't get one of those and the other next one in line that I'd heard good things about was Case Creations and like I said it's it's very nice um but that's kind of stuck with me so this uh delivery I just picked up that just interrupted my video is actually Ada uh, the reason I've been picking up some Ada is because I've been having a little fun dyeing my own fabric. Again, um, I like to do things sort of as a, can I? Am I able? Is this something I can do? And then I enjoy trying it out for a while, and then usually I let go and don't ever touch it again. <laughs> but what I did is I ended up dyeing a couple of pieces, and then I wanted, you know, to try... These are, like, four solid colors. I wanted to try mixing colors and seeing what I could do. But I basically just dyed my own pieces of Ada. So this was originally 14 count Ada, and after the dyeing pro um, process, it's basically become 16 count, which is perfect because 16 count is my wheelhouse. So I just bought some like Ada and then um, threw some dye in. I did the whole salt vinegar thing, mixed it all up, and then I just threw it in a jar and then let it bake out into the sun. So yeah, um, this was fuchsia. So this is just the straight fuchsia. Everybody was like, don't expect it to be dark. The colors are going to be so light, yada, yada. And I was like, um, I soaked mine in the ink and probably used, or in the dye, and I probably used a lot of it. Um, and so the colors came out really bright and they've got a wonderful mild uh, modeling. This one has a bit, like I actually did this one twice. Um, so sorry, this one is fuchsia, so it's just straight fuchsia. This one is actually the navy, and then I threw some teal. I did a second round with teal. You can't really see it, but what happened is where the lightest navy was, it sort of took on a slightly different color. But overall, it still kind of really looks navy. But the colors came out really, really bright. This was purple. Ah, I love this one so much. So obviously this kind of bright purple is screaming for a Halloween piece. Um, and this last piece is the teal. So this was a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, I, I bought a bit more Ada to sort of play around with mixing some colors up, trying to do two-toned things to see if that's possible. Also trying to just play with reducing the color or whatever. It's not a perfect science. It's not something where you can have a vision in your head and then it's going to come out perfectly. Um, but either way, it was kind of a lot of fun to just do that um, and have a little fun. It's not, it doesn't take a lot of work. I just mixed up the colors, scrunched the fabric up in the jar, poured the color over it, done and done. Um, and like I said, I don't know if it's the dyeing process itself or I threw them in the dryer to dry them off. So they ended up shrinking from a 14 to a 16 count. But since I prefer 16 count, 
it turned out perfect for me. So just kind of a little something that if, if you can, give it a try. You never know. I will certainly find things to stitch on these bright colors. We know I'm all about that. Um, but I'm going to experiment a little more and see what I can do with that. Uh, what else did I get? So the other thing I did was I stopped in um, at the Stitch Bug. They are my LNS or local needle workshop. I've gotten two patterns. Another one, another Barbara Anna. This is called Oh Halloween Tree. Pardon the glare. Um, I thought this was super cute and I think this has been out for a while. It's an older one, but I'm a new stitcher. I've only been doing this for a year, so everything is new to me. Um, loved the simple color palette. It looks like there's only three or four colors, but there's surprisingly a large amount of them. Um, but I thought it was fun. It is Barbara Anna, but it's not a hundred percent like all the others I've been doing. It doesn't have the vines and the houses and stuff like that. So this was different enough that I didn't feel like I'd be stitching the same thing again. Um, cute little witches, kitties, a lot of fun. The next one I got is Welcome Halloween. Again, another Halloween pattern. This from is from, hmm. Oh, so it's the little font at the bottom. It looks like it's called Mercury de la Gargouille. So this is a French company, a company from France. Same thing, another Halloween one, because I can't wait to stitch Halloween stuff, apparently. Um, and this is kind of just sort of like a Halloween village, uh, little hills, houses, uh, little witchies. I thought it was super adorable. And again, the color scheme was really nice. Um, I love the added sort of like mushroom houses, which made it just a little bit different. Um, and it's a thick packet, so I wouldn't be surprised if you're getting all these little extras in it as well. Um, so I thought that was really, really cute. And uh, look what we're just stitching that. But this is a company I'd never heard of, Mercury de la Gargouille. Uh, yeah, a company from uh, France. Looks like the designer is Camille Colgica. So perfect. I can't wait to stitch on that. And then while I was there, like I mentioned, I picked up... <laughs> you can see all the little ends. So this is the, you can see a bit more of the shine, but this was the Krynik that I used on Safe Space. This is, uh, do they have names? Do they have colors? 5760. Um, it doesn't look like much. I, I found it kind of odd that just after a few uses, I, I can already see the black of the spool. Um, but it wasn't too bad, and it was definitely preferable to working with DMC Metallic. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just throwing stuff on the floor. So the other one, this is what I used. I mean, it would really, let's see, the glare. Can we get this where it doesn't have glare? Um, I mean, this is a rainbow pack all on its own. This is the summer collection from Sulky. So you get six colors in one pack. Um, a perfect amount. And this was a lot of fun to work with. This will not be the last time you see me working with Sulky. That's for sure. So a little more expensive, but honestly, the ease of working with it, the softness of it, how easily it went through the fabric, the lack of tangles, uh, I think that's worth paying a little more for. Um, and this, you only work with one thread, but there are, I believe it's 50 meters on each one, 50 yards, sorry. So there's 50 yards in each one of these spools. So it, it evens out. Um, and I think that's really great. Quite, quite happy with that. The last thing I picked up at the Stitch Bug was a cute little needle threader because there's a couple needles I have that are really, really small. Let me put my basket down. Um, and that I occasionally have trouble, um, you know, threading or whatever. So it's double-ended. You've got a larger side um, and a smaller side. And it's got a cute little honeycomb and the dangly bee there. So I thought that was really cute. And it looks to be um, handmade, like someone, either someone they know or they did it themselves. I'm not sure, but it's too too cute um, and this has made it a bit easier for a couple of my projects where I have really small needles um, to kind of just get that thread through especially when I'm playing thread chicken and I've only got a little bit left just kind of makes my life a bit easier what I do need to invest in is one of those um, what are they called tail tuckers where you've got the the double thin needles and it just snaps in there and you pull it through that's what I need next we've got some new fabric pardon the crinkling I got my next month's supply or piece, I should say, from Fortnite Fabrics. Oh! Is this called Bellman Louise? Is that what it is? I threw the package down and now I can't. I should not be looking down like this after having had vertigo. Uh, sorry, this is Bonnie and Clyde. 
Hi! I love this so much. It's like a purpley pink and a green. I think this is fantastic. And I think I got 32 count linen this time around. They're getting their stock, um, they're getting their stock back, which is great. So lovely. They always do such a beautiful job and their linen always feels so, so nice. Um, so thank you to Fortnite Fabrics for that one. This is the Famous Duos Monthly Club. So they're where you're guaranteed to get two colors every time. From Forbidden Fiber Co. It was a heavy mail week, let me tell y'all. Let, let me tell y'all. And some of them got stories. Um, the other thing I got, because I was so excited when I saw that, is the Hunger Games collection from Forbidden Fiber Co. So Forbidden Fiber Co., they are cotton, and they are, as they say on the back of every label, color fast and light fast. Yes! Um, so this was their Hunger Games collection. It was done in honor of the new prequel about President Snow came out. I really need to reread the series and read the new book as well. But I love the colors that Forbidden Fiber Co. did. They're phenomenal. So we've got Nightlock. Beautiful. And the variegation in almost every single one of their threads is phenomenal. This is Quarter Quell. Beautiful. District 13. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my god. So, so good. I love it. Um, love the, I love it when there's like really distinct variations in the color. This is Tribute. So once again, we've got a dark red maroon and then that light tan color in there, as well as a lighter red. Perfect. Uh, Pan M, beautiful minty green. Oh my God, this color is so, so nice. And there's a variegation in this as well, but not as much. So if you're into solid colors, this one is pretty good. Um, and then, of course, Capital, which looks to be like a mix of all of the colors. Beautifully done. I was really, really quite impressed with this color. I cannot wait to see how this stitches up. So that is the Hunger Games collection from Forbidden Fiber Co. Totally beautiful. I jumped on that right away. And I have to say, compared to some um, cotton dyers... Um, they're really reasonably priced, both in terms of the shipping and the threads themselves, like getting just one threads. Um, there is one company that I bought from in the past and now realize that their cotton costs the same in Canadian dollars as, for example, Almond M&M's silk costs after the exchange. So they're in US, but then they convert to Canadian dollars and cost the same. If I've got a choice between paying a price for cotton or, or the same price for silk, I'm going to go for silk every time. So when you've got a cotton company that's reasonably priced, I'm going to jump on it every single time. So I know people charge different things. It is a handmade product. Supplies are probably also more expensive in Canada than they are in the U.S. But I think you also got to stay competitive. Um, buy what you want, spend your money on whatever you want. But if I've got a choice between paying $5 a, a skein for silk or $5 a skein for floss, for cotton, I'm going to go for silk every time. It's beautiful. It works up nicely. It's so soft. No bargain. But anyways, all that aside, beautifully done for Bidden Fiber Co. Thank you so much. Uh, Last but not least is um, neither stitching. Oh no, it's not last. I've got more. But anyways, this next part is not stitching related. Well, it's not cross stitch related. And this took the most roundabout journey to get to me. It's unbelievable. It went from Mississauga to Dieppe, which is 10 minutes from me. So Mississauga for me is like 1200 kilometers. Dieppe is like 20 kilometers, not even. 15 and then it went back to Mississauga and then it came back to me don't know what happened but it was worth the wait so I've, a couple of these are unfolded because I, I was actually trying to play around with them excuse me I ended up getting some fabrics from Sunshine and Peony so one of the collections I got I should not have unfolded these it's gonna make it that much harder to show you guys 
So one of the collections I got was the Old Maid collection from Riley Blake. So it's kind of Halloween-y, kind of a play on stitching, an Old Maid, M-A-D-E. So it's like the game or the old card game, but as well as stitching um, or sewing related. So we've got the cute little black um, fabric with the orange polka dot cats, which are adorable. Um, we've got these two pieces which are similar where is it but different colors so we've got it in tan and we've got or sorry tan and orange and it's basically like the text and the writing um cording all stuff about stitching the the old maid here which is really great i this is what made me, this image here is what made me buy this collection. So this is basically just a, a pack of fat quarters. So the um, a tan is very similar, but depending on how or which cut you got, it might look a little different. Um, but too cute, black, white, and colors works like magic. So very cute. And then the other two pieces again are similar prints, but you've got one with the orange background and one with the black background. So you've got all these wonderful old made images, dead end spook cotton, ever popular, um, I can't read backwards, card game. Um, but these, these images are phenomenal. I absolutely love them. Um, I think it was, this collection is just so well done. So kudos to Riley Blake. I'm not necessarily, you know, a fabric person, but I can see why people kind of go nuts for this stuff because the colors are so fun. The images are a lot of fun. So at some point in time, they will be made into project bags. Um, someday 17 years from now when i reach 500 subscribers i will absolutely do a giveaway and that will include some project bags that i've made because why not i think that'll be fun um the other one i picked up uh, this is let me see what it's called ray ritchie for dear stella uh i don't know if the pattern itself has a name but whatever and it is basically white with purpley pumpkin looking skulls and florals really liked this i loved how the skull kind of makes you do a double take and that it goes in both directions so no matter how you use it you've got yourself beautiful pumpkin and then like little moths and stuff so cute i love this um what else what else did we get um does this have a name i'm trying to find the edge of it because sometimes on the edge uh this is camelot fabrics i don't know what the name was i think it was like reading something or other or book nerd or I don't know something like that but keep calm and read on uh I'd rather be reading shh I'm reading so this was kind of fun I I liked the sort of head silhouettes and the colors chosen for it so again I mean I could maybe make that into a book sleeve instead I think that would be nice I believe the rest are the other two I have are also Dear Stella yeah so this is a Dear Stella as well um this one is almost stitchy related so this will definitely be a project bag so it's basically um hoops and needle and thread scissors and the hoops have all kinds of like awesome like yay bees and cacti and um foliage so lots of fun little and i think this is is it black yes it's black i was trying to figure out if it's navy or black i'm pretty sure it's black it's black um, but really cute and again stitching related so this will be a lot of fun to I mean even the little bobbins they're so cute and then the last one I got because who should be surprised that I picked up something mermaid I'm I'm opening this up a bit more than the others so that you can see I love the variety they you know vary the skin tones up including um, you know different types of skin tones in different positions and different like it's not like the the one mermaid looks all looks like this, or that mermaid all looks like this. Um, they really varied it up, which is nice. And um, do we see it in this one? Yes, there's a castle in there as well. Lots of coral, um, sunken ship as well. So super cute. I love this. It should be a project bag. This actually is really long compared to the others. So this is not a fat quarter, um, but something can be made of that. I'm sure. This is 
is the last but not least item. I got some yarn from Mislaid Pages. So she did a live D stash a while back. I always love to attend those one um, because every time someone does a live D stash, it's 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 fun. It's conversational as well. Like you get to chit chat and socialize. Um, you get to know the person who's hosting a little bit more and you get to support them. So one man's D stash is another man's treasure. Um, so I got two hanks of La Brebi. This is, looks to be from Knit Crate. It, the colorway is, I got actually two hanks of it, which was awesome because as a crocheter, you always need more, <laughs> more than uh, knitters do. Uh, the color is called Dogwood Berry. This is 100% baby alpaca. Soft. I am enjoying this so much. This is fingering weight. Yeah. Um, the softness of this is phenomenal. Um, and I believe that Jessie Misslay Pages was de-stashing because the color just isn't her thing. Um, for me, it certainly is. I love me some reds. Um, and I love that there's like little bits of white. It's not perfectly red. So it's got so a type of variegation, almost like, you know, like a red heather almost. Um, so lots and lots of fun. So, um, this was certainly my gain. It was something that she got in Knit Crate. And it feels phenomenal. I've never worked with alpaca. I was worried that it would be kind of really hairy and fluffy. Um, but maybe I was thinking more of mohair. I don't know. It was not as fluffy. But super fun. Woof. I made it. I was um, not afraid of not making it. But I was like, I'm going to be all over the place today. And I probably was. And I talked really fast. I'm sure I did. I'm doing it right now. Um... But yeah, um, I did want to get this video out. I didn't want to wait anymore. I wanted to show you guys everything. So, well, you know, it was the usual hour. I made it through. Hopefully I'll have more to share next week. But I do, in terms of plans, want to work on um, the Dark Queen the most. As well as focusing on those two other pieces that I believe I can finish in a reasonable amount of time. Um... You know, I, I want a few of those under my belt before I start new things. I do have, um, one is the, the Tiny Modernist, their Halloween piece that's coming out July 1st. So I want to have, you know, those two out of the way, two finishes done before I do a new start. Um, I also picked up the Trans Tapestry Unicorn. Uh, from D's 20 stitches. Let me put that up on screen. However, um, I'm not going to start that this month. I already knew that, but I did want to support because the money from the charity goes both to the artist of the original tapestry, which is fantastic. Pay the artist. Um, and then the another portion of proceeds will go towards uh, trans and LGBTQ2 plus uh, organizations. So I think that was phenomenal and I wanted to get in on that donation and, and be a part of that. Um, a lot of people also have talked about making changes to that pattern to fit their own sexuality or their own umbrellas under the LGBTQ2 plus. Um, I'm not sure how I want to do that. So I decided not to start that one until I know exactly what I want to do with it. Um, it's very trans related, uh, transgender related and supportive. And so I feel a little odd about changing the colors to my own sexuality, especially since I believe that gender stuff is not necessarily the same as like your sexual attraction. They're not the same thing. So it's not as if, you know, this was a lesbian piece and I made it gay or that this was a gay piece and I made it bi or anything like that. It's not quite like that. So I'm kind of having mixed feelings about keeping it true to the transgender support um, or maybe making a twist on it or maybe with the fabric I could display something else. I don't know. But because I didn't feel 100% about what I wanted to do with it or how I wanted to go, and I've told myself I can't start anything until I finish other things, it's going to wait. But I did want to put it out there and I'm going to link that because, like I said, it's beautiful causes, um, you know, so I was happy. I was happy to get in on that. Um, Miss Laid Pages is also doing a stitch along, so if you want to get in on that, Trans-Tastic Sal, phenomenal, great name, love it. 
Um, so that's going to be out there too, but at some point in time I will start that, just like those Halloween pieces. Um, I kind of want to start one of those Halloween pieces in July as well, so once again, got to do the finishes before I do the starts. No fun in that, I know. Um, but that's it for this fortnight. I hope you are all doing well. I hope none of you get vertigo. <laughs> uh, I hope I don't get vertigo again. Um, and I love each and every one of you who throws a like my way, who comments, who subscribes. Um, you're all phenomenal people. And um, if you also want to see my progress more than every two weeks, I share a lot of my works in progress and where I'm at on stuff on my Instagram at Calmimo, C-A-L-M-I-M-O. So you can always catch me there and see what I'm working on and see my finishes before they even get to, to floss to you. But um, that's it for this week. Have a good one. Take care of yourself. Remember the sloppy crafter is a happy crafter. Relax. Just enjoy what you're doing. And that's it. À la prochaine